welcome to another video in today's video we're going to talk about the charge of the light brigade by alfred lord tennyson i love this poem it is a tribute to the light brigade this poem talks about a real brief charge made by the light brigade against the russian forces in the battle of balaclava on 25th of october 9 1854 on 25th of October, uh, on the 25th of October 1854 half a leg half a leg half a leg onward all in the valley of death rode the six and red forward the light brigade charge for the guns he said into the valley of death rode the six and red forward the light brigade was there a man dismayed not though the soldiers knew someone had blundered there's not to make reply there's not to reason why there's but to do do and die into the valley of death rode the 600 cannon to the right of them cannon to the left of them cannon in front of them volleyed and thundered stormed at with shot and shell boldly they rode and well into the jaws of death into the mouth of hell rode the 600 flashed all their sabers bare flashed as they turned in air sabring the gunners there charging an enemy while the world wandered plunged in the battery smoke right through the line they broke Cossack and russian reeled from their saber stroke shattered and sundered then they rode back but not not the 600 cannon to the right of them cannon to the left of them cannon behind them volleyed and thundered stormed at with shot and shell while horse and hero fell they that had fought so well came through the jaws of death all that was left of them left of 600 when can their glory fade oh the wild charge they made all the world wondered honor the charge they made honor the light brigade noble 600 the charge of the light brigade is made up of six stanzas in the first stanza we find the valiant and courageous march of the light brigade into the mouth of hell into the enemies then in the second stanza we find that there actually had been a blunder a big mistake someone has committed a big mistake there there was a miscommunication there was a misinformation but the light brigade does not question why does not try to reason third stanza we find the imagery of this light brigade marching into the mouth of hell into the jaws of death in the fourth stanza we find that there are casualties on both sides whether it is the russian and the cossacks or the british light brigade fifth stanza is about the retreat of the light brigade after completing the charge it also consists of imagery of the light brigade re retreating from the war as cannons continue to hurl shots and shells at them we are told about the fall of horses and fall of the heroes and in the sixth stanza alfred lord tennyson pays his respect and tribute and honors the 600 for their courageous charge he urges that this noble 600 truly deserve the honor and respect of the nation these words of half a leg half a leg half a leg on word is meant to sound like the galloping of the horses of the light brigade right from the beginning it was a sure defeat for the light brigade because the Cossack and russians were ready with their ammunition they were ready with the cannons and guns the light brigade on the other hand had nothing but horses and sabers swords and even though there were other heavy brigade ready for war purpose the light brigade was sent to the war front to face the cannons and the gunners it gives the imagination of the light brigade walking into the mouth of hell the imagery valley of death is taken from the biblical valley of the shadow of death the light brigade marched forward with its 600 soldiers because someone from the higher authority has ordered them to do so someone had ordered forward the light brigade charge for the guns so into the mouth of the battlefield rode the 600 forward the light brigade was there a man dismayed the poet is 
asking ordering the light brigade to march forward has someone gone crazy but what does it matter whether someone lost his mind or not the duty of the light brigade was to merely obey orders without questioning them or without trying to reason why the order is being put up it is not in their power to reply back it is not in their power to reason why it is their duty to go ahead and sacrifice themselves for the welfare of the nation so into the mouth of death rode the 600 and as they charged forward towards the russian and the cossacks with their cannons and guns as they reached the mouth of hell that was that was ever so ready to devour them they were attacked with cannon shots and shells from all three sides with a thunderous sound but nevertheless they were not scared they just they just charged into the mouth of hell obeying the orders of the authority the russians and the cossacks ready with their cannons and guns to face the enemy is compared to the mouth of hell or jaws of death the explosions from the cannon shots and shells ignited the battlefield with fire and smoke and Tennyson explains that this ignition of fire and light reflects on the sabers or swords of the members of the light brigade as their bodies and their sabers were tossed in the air the whole world wondered to hear and watch the light brigade the brigade that was not ready for war charge into the battlefield to face its death and to face the strong enemy they charged the army the real war trained russian enemies and in spite of these cannons being shot and volleyed towards them with thunderous sound they managed to reach the enemy line to break them apart they managed to strike the russians and the cossacks then the light brigade retreated they retreated but not all the 600 many had perished in the war and as they retreated cannons were still hurling from the right of them cannons hurling from the left of them cannons hurling from behind them they retreated from the jaws of death they retreated from the mouth of hell in the last stanza Tennyson honors the 600 members of the light brigade saying when can their glory fade that was such a wild attack the whole world wondered Tennyson urges that their act on the call of duty deserves great honor they are the noble 600 who readily acted without questioning the authority the next day after the charge of the light brigade it was all in the news people read about it and passed commands about what was wrong with it about how it should be done well that's what majority of the humans do right instead of doing something about it we love to sit back and talk about how it should be done how it should not be done where it should be done similarly people read it in the news and they started commenting on what a fool the authority was how it should be done how it should not be done and blah 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 but alfred lord tennyson looks at the charge of the light brigade with a totally different view saying that these 600 men really deserve honor and respect for their sacrifices and their unquestioning sense of duty in the charge of the light brigade half a lick half a lick half a lick on board creates the bit of uh, the galloping of the horses of the light brigade into the mouth of death into the dangerous battlefield try imagining the sound of the galloping horse in slow motion and listen to half a lick half a lick half a lick onward so in that way alfred lord tennyson creates the beat of the galloping horses of the light brigade into the battle through his word half a leg half a leg half a leg on word half a leg is one and a half mile we all know the valley of death is a biblical phrase 
taken by Alfred Lord Tennyson from Psalms 23 even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death so the second is a biblical element the third is repetition we know it already that repetition is the repetitive sound of repeating a line repeating a phrase you will find in the first stanza forward the light brigade charge for the guns he said and the second stanza you will find forward the light brigade was there a man dismayed by using repetition of the phrase forward the light brigade alfred lord tennyson wants to emphasize that there has been a big blunder a big mistake by ordering forward the light brigade now a new term that we haven't been using anaphora anaphora is the repetitive use of a word one word to to make the reader feel that okay this is important that particular word is important to emphasize on that particular word and in the charge of the light brigade you will find that alfred lord tennyson has used a lot of anaphora dares not to make reply dares not to reason why dares but to do and die the poet is emphasizing on the fact that it is not their duty to ask it is not their duty to make reply it is not their duty to reason or understand why the order is being passed but theirs it is the only thing that they have power doing is obedience next stanza again says cannon to the right of them cannon to the left of them cannon in front of them it means they the poet wants to emphasize the fact that they have been surrounded by powerful enemies with cannons another example of anaphora is uh, flashed all their sabers bare, flashed as they turned in air. Through these lines, Tennyson wants to emphasize that the battlefield has been, the battlefield is full of explosion and smoke and their iron swords tossed up in the air and reflected the explosion and the fire. In the second last stanza, anaphora is used again to emphasize that as they were retreating from war, cannon shots were still flying in from the left of them, cannons from the right of them, cannons from behind them. It emphasizes that even with their retreat, the, the danger still continued. The next poetic device that Tennyson uses in the charge of the Light Brigade is rhetorical questions. Rhetorical questions are questions that do not expect a response, that do not expect an answer. Does your mother ever tell you, how many times do I have to tell you not to waste time on your mobile phones? These kind of questions that do not expect answers are called rhetorical questions. You will find in the charge of the light brigade, was there a man dismayed? That means, did someone lose his mind? The other rhetorical question in this poem is When can their glory fade? Meaning, this, their, their glory is never going to fade. We all know that death is not a person, nor is hell. Hell is also is not a person. But Tennyson picturizes them as persons having jaws and having a mouth so he says into the jaws of death into the mouth of hell so into the jaws of death is personification of death and into the mouth of hell is personification of hell next one and the simplest one and the easiest one and the most common one alliteration he uses a lot of alliteration some of which are Stormed at with shot and shell, the sound of S. Reeled from their saber stroke, shattered and sundered, sound of S. All the world wondered, sound of W. Horse and hero fell, H sound, saber stroke, shattered and sundered, 